Welcome to section 9.5, day one, complex numbers and polar equations. All right, complex numbers in rectangular form are of the form A plus BI, where the vertical y-axis becomes the imaginary axis. And then A is the real part of the number and BI is the imaginary part of the number. So you'll see on the side there, we have the point three plus two I is graphed. Three is the real part of the number. So we move over three units on the real axes, which is usually your X axes. And then we go up two units on the I axes, the imaginary axes, and we place our point. This is the imaginary plane. So we have the real axes for your X, the imaginary axes is your Y. So part of today is just going to be graphing on the imaginary plane so you get used to it. And then we will look at finding absolute values and some other things that we can do with these, uh, with the imaginary plane. So first off, the absolute value of a complex number. So the absolute value of a real number is the distance from zero. In the complex plane, the absolute value is the distance from the origin. Sort of the same idea. Um, it's like the radius if you're looking at a, a unit circle type setup. And so all we have to do is we want to find the absolute value of the number z, which is a plus bi. We just take and take the square root of a squared plus b squared. Just using the Pythagorean theorem, you guys have done this many times, that is the idea. We're just trying to find out how far away from the origin the point is. We will use this later so we can convert between polar form and rectangular form. This is one of the reasons why we do this. All right, so we want to graph this z equals 2 plus 3i in the complex plane. We want to find its absolute value. First, we will plot it. So we go 2 over on the real axes and up 3 on the imaginary axes. So we are right here. And we want to find the absolute value of z, which is our complex number. So we have the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared. This is the square root. Yeah, 4 plus 9, which is 13. And we are looking at the radius, or the distance, I should say. So this is going to be a positive number. And we generally will round to the nearest hundredth. So 3.61 is what we get. And that'd be the distance that point is from the origin. Do another one. We have uh, z, our complex number, is negative 3 plus i. So we're going to go backwards 3 on the real axes. And then we have plus i, so that is plus 1i. So we are up one unit on the imaginary. And we are right there. And then we're going to find the absolute value. So the absolute value of z is negative 3 squared plus 1 squared. This is the square root of 10, which is 3.16. All right, now we're going to move on to looking at the polar form of a complex number. So the polar form of a complex number, if we have the complex number z equals a plus bi, the way we make it into polar is z equals the radius, and then in parentheses, cosine theta plus i sine theta. The radius is what we just did, the absolute value. So we're going to use that for our r value. Take the absolute value of a squared, take the square root of a squared plus b squared, and that is our r. All right, then A is our cosine theta. And if you think about this, when we did trig, this would be like your X, this would be like your Y, and we talked about this earlier, X is our cosine theta. Well, A is basically the X, and Y was our sine theta, and B is basically the Y, sort of replacing each other. Okay, when we go to the complex plane, your A is replacing the x-axis, yeah. And your B is your y-axis. All right, and then to find the angle measure, this is where it's a little trickier. We have to take the inverse tangent of B over A. You can see where our angle is there, opposite over adjacent. The next thing is we have to find the angle measure. So if A is positive, A is greater than zero, we use theta is tangent inverse of B over A, which is just opposite over uh, adjacent. If A is less than zero, that means we're gonna be down in the, we're gonna be on the left side, because we're negative. Uh, then we have to do the B over A and plus pi. And we will do these in radians. So we have the tangent inverse of B over A plus pi. Again, it goes back to inverse tangent is formed by using negative pi halves to pi halves. 
So if we are on the other half of the circle, we need to add pi to get over there. That's basically how it works. Because the period of tangent is pi. That's another reason. So we want to take this complex number, negative 2 plus 5i, and we want to put it into polar form. So one of the things we have to do is find the radius. So our radius is the square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared. Negative 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is, five, uh, is 25, so we get the square root of 29, which is approximately 5.39. If you look at where this would be on the plane, our A is negative, so we're over here. We're up here somewhere. We're at negative 2, 5 on the complex plane. And this is my I. This is my real. Okay. So we have to use the plus pi part of our function. So theta is tangent inverse of B over A. And we're going to add pi. Make sure you are in radians when you do this, because we're going to put our answers in radians. Okay. When you do this on your calculator and you add the pi at the end, you should get 1.95 for theta. And this is in radians. All right, and then we write the polar form, if you recall. Polar form was R and then cosine theta plus I sine theta. So all we have to do is plug our pieces in. 5.39 cosine of 1.95 plus I sine of 1.95. And now we have our complex number in polar form. Let's do one more of those. So here you have the complex number, 6 plus 2i. Again, we need to find the radius. The radius is the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared. This will be 36 plus 4, which is the square root of 40. The square root of 40 is approximately... 6.32. For this one, our point is in the first quadrant, so all we have to use is theta equals inverse tangent of b over a, so 2 over 6, and then what we do is you plug it in your calculator and you get that theta is approximately 0 0.32. All right, for from here, we are going to write it into our polar form. So you take the radius. We have cosine of 0 0.32 plus I and sine of 0 0.32. And this is in radians. And there's my polar form. All right, that is all for 9.5 day one. Today we looked at the complex plane and then we changed complex numbers into polar form. Um, that is your goal for the day. The assignment is a PDF in Schoology. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.